Today we are going to show you how to build a schoolie back deck, aka a motorcycle rack, without welding. Alright, so we're getting ready for paint. We are prepping, we're sanding everything, and I want to take this rear bumper off. For two reasons. First, it's going to be a lot easier to sand the body with the bumper off. But second, we are planning a back motorcycle deck, um, which is going to extend off the back here. So we're going to need to take the bumper off anyways. So the bumper that is bolted on here to this kind of like frame thing. And this frame thing is bolted on to the actual bus frame. So if you look at the other side, you can see there's three bolts that are holding it on. However, those three bolts are actually in that tube. You can kind of see them in there. So we're going to have to find a way to get a ratchet or a wrench down into that tube so we can get those two off and then hopefully this whole thing comes off. Good stuff. I literally have no idea why they would put the bolt like inside of this C channel, but we're working with what we got. So we got to figure out how to get it out. Okay, definitely my fave, PB Blaster. We're gonna loosen these up so we don't have to worry about anything. Three quarters. And three quarters, perfect. So let's go get two three quarters and we'll try and get these out. We have two big pieces of C channel, six inch by two inch by quarter inch. We have three big pieces of square tube steel that are going to go this way. And then we have two pieces of square tube steel that are going to go parallel to the bus. So we're just going to bolt it on using the pre-existing holes in our bus's frame. Just got to drill a few holes, get some bolts, screw it together. We're going to be good to go. So planning for this rack, we are planning to leave four feet of deck platform. So it's going to be quite large, that's because we're putting a motorcycle on it. So we bought this to be 80 inches long. So we have 48 inches sticking out, 32 inches overlapping, and that's so we have quite a bit of space to use the holes that are already in the frame. Looking at our tape measure, you can see this huge thing. It says do not drill holes or weld. A lot of people do anyways. We're not going to do that. Mostly because I don't know how to weld. Anyways, we're going to be using these three holes here these three holes here and these two holes here. That's probably way overkill, but you know, who cares? So our furthest hole back is about 29 inches from this rear. Um, I've left 32, so we should be having more than enough um, overhang here. Um, and then we'll stick out 48 inches. Our, uh, our C channel that's gonna hold up our rack is six inches tall. This is about 10 inches tall, but we need to kind of lift it up a little bit. One, it'll make it a bit more flush with the bottom of the bus. And the second is so that we can actually drill these holes into the middle of the C channel and not have to be like on the very top or bottom. So lifting it up, we're using two by fours to prop it a little bit so that it's gonna stay level with the bus. Um, this is an inch and a half raise, so hopefully that works should be easy, so we'll see how that looks. These are holes for half inch bolts, but really what that means is you have to go up a tiny bit because a half inch hole, it's hard to get a half inch bolt in. So this is a 9 16 drill bit. So slightly bigger. It's probably a little teeny tiny bit bigger than it needs to be, but it should be fine.
All right, so this is the rough draft of our back deck. So what you got here is two pieces of six inch by two inch by quarter inch C-channel. It's mild steel. Um, these are like well strong enough to hold me up or a motorcycle or like tons of weight off the back. They're sticking out four feet and they have 32 inches of overlap on our bus frame. Um, right now they're only bolted in with like two bolts and like you can see they're really strong can hold all my weight so we're gonna end up with like five or six or something bolts so gonna be more than enough on top of that we have square tube steel this is one and a half inch by eighth inch thick square tube steel this stuff is also very strong and then the very last thing that we have all the way on the end this is still half inch square tube steel it's actually going to go underneath like this um, just to pour, uh, provide more rigidity to the outside of this. Um, so it's going to kind of end up looking like this. We might have to cut this a little bit because they're pretty long, but we're just going to bolt these down straight through and then put some wooden planks across and then we're good. We have these cut to the right length now. What we're gonna do is drill uh, four holes in each so that we can connect two holes to this uh, C-channel. The outer two holes will go to our outer support and that's it. Just gonna measure and cut now. We're uh, finishing up the back deck, hopefully, and we're gonna be putting a wooden back bumper on because it's gonna save us some weight and it'll help us line up the rest of the wooden planks. Um, we have some of these metal L brackets that came from the bottom of the bus, so we're gonna use them to kind of support the wooden bracket. Um, we have bolts that already fit the hole, which is great. So we're gonna use them to bolt onto here. We'll bolt the wood through, and then we're gonna call it a day.
little uh, nighttime working session. We're gonna keep working on the deck. It's just me tonight, so here we go. We got to the bolts. So what I did was I just colored the top of the bolts in with the Sharpie. Um, and then I put the board that I'm gonna use on and then kind of hit it. That leaves three black marks where my bolts are. Then I have this Fostner bit which will drill a flat bottomed hole into this wood. So I'm just gonna use it to drill a little bit in. Hopefully that will sit over the top of my bolt so that my board can sit flush on the rest of the metal. All right, time to do some sanding while Chris drills some holes to get the motor rack set up. We are here at the back deck and we are about to stain it. So we've got our stainer. We've got a brush, we sanded the entire thing, wiped it down, and now we're ready to start staining. All we're gonna do is screw this down. You can get this at Harbor Freight or anywhere, like Tractor Supply. It is a motorcycle wheel chalk. So when you drive in, it like locks your wheel in place. It's super great. All right, so these are carriage bolts. Um, they go into this. There's a square part which locks in place. It came with this plastic washer. So this goes underneath here, but above the wood. Then we go through the wood. I got some big fender washers, which uh, help dissipate the load onto the wood, spreads it out a little bit. Then we got a lock nut and double safety. This is also a nylon lock nut. So then we just screw all that in. And we're good to go. We have some bungee cords that are holding this together. I'm going to take them off and show you why. This is our temporary solution, but we need to secure these together so that it does not do this on the highway. Um, it can only go so far, but there is a little bit of pivot room. Um, we don't really want that happening, so as long as these are secured together, can't go anywhere. 
Up next, we have this angle iron. There's one bolt through here so it can pivot, but how do we keep it on here? We have a lock. So just a simple padlock. Um, we can take that off. Padlock goes through my angle iron and through a door hinge that we've secured to the deck. And the reason we use the door hinge is so that we could fold it flat when it's not in use. And that way we can sit on the deck and not have to worry about something kind of sticking up, poking us. With just the wheel chalk, I don't need to really hold this up anymore, but of course we're gonna strap it down. So I have four ratcheting straps. We're gonna hook it to the bike right through the frame and then we're good to go. Lessons learned from our schoolie deck. Make sure when you're drilling holes through this hard metal, you do it with a pilot hole first, so start small and then get bigger. Also, make sure you're doing it off the bus so you don't hit yourself in the face like I did. I know we talked about this in our video, but make sure you're using the appropriate bolts for the job. We used half inch grade eight bolts, which are very strong. If you can't find that, I would recommend grade three or some kind of stainless steel. Definitely, definitely do not use zinc because they'll rust and break. Also, it was hard for me to find screws that were designed to go through wood and then lock into metal. I ended up finding something called multi-material construction screws, which are designed for both types of material. Another thing, I was surprised at how cheap the metal actually was. For both pieces of C-channel and all of the square tube steel, it only cost me about $200 from a local metal place. I would recommend you look for a metal supermarket, that's actually what they're called, or some other kind of metal shop in your area. You can't really get this kind of metal at your local hardware store, but it is possible to get it shipped to your house. It just might cost a little bit because it's so heavy. All right, we decided to do a bolt-on instead of welding for three main reasons. The first, I don't know how to weld, and it's really expensive to get somebody else to do that for you. The second, clear as day on our frame, there's a sticker that says, do not drill holes or weld to the frame of the bus. We see a lot of people ignoring that, but we always try to be safe when we can. And the third reason, if we ever decide we don't want this back deck, we can still remove it. If you weld one on, it's gonna be a lot harder to take off in the future. When we're parked on level ground, this deck sits about 36 inches off the ground. We have a nine foot ramp, so it does create a pretty steep angle, but it is just fine for us to get the bike up. Don't recommend you go any shorter for your ramps. If you thought this video was helpful, please subscribe to our channel, check us out on Instagram or Facebook, and next week we're going to show you how to install brake lights on this back deck.